I'm gonna wear your skin. I'm gonna wear your skin. Oh, 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 what? No, no, what? Shh, shh, shh. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, no. Yes. I'm gonna carve it off you, and I'm gonna use its power. I'm, I'm gonna. Oh, no, what's that? Go to sleep. Yes. I'm gonna cover myself in your. Okay, seriously, I know I'm not imagining this. Hello, my fellow hunters, and welcome to the full Safri Jeeva Siege, and oh my god, it's so, 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 so good! Oh, it's just, it's so much better done than Call of Duty, and it makes me so happy, and it is such a good fight, and it is epic, eclectic, and just... Oh, oh. oh so there is one more layer after the recon mission, which plays pretty much the same as it did in the recon mission. The whole siege really just boils down to everyone in the lobby, do hunts on him, hurt him as much as you can, and eventually within the 20 minute time limit, because it's very much intense against the clock, you will kill him. You force him to drain the energy level per level, he retreats away, and eventually there is nowhere to retreat and no energy left to absorb. And the reason why this is so good is with Kulv, you are encouraged to essentially not fight her, just pick up tracks to raise an arbitrary pursuit level, and then that was kind of that. Whereas with Safi, the best way to make him killable on the next one is to kill him as hard as possible on every current one. And it works beautifully. It really, really does. The final area, though, oh, it's like descending into the underworld. Magnificent! Having to dodge his final big area blasting attack with series of rocks that he keeps refreshing and raining down from the sky. He just gets so furious and fast and... I mean, intense is the word. The environment is wonderful. He is wonderful. And it's actually a genuinely fun siege that doesn't take forever. Just a single four-man team, three hunts and, well, the kill. So a full lobby is going to absolutely tear through Safi Jeevers. And that is great considering, oh, we're going to be wanting to farm him for an eternity because his equipment is godlike. His weapons can go up to rank 6 of the bonuses, affinity 6, attack 6. However, they might not be as good as we thought because if you want Master's Touch, that requires three pieces of Teo armor, so you need Master's Touch times three on the weapon. Whether you can actually get three of it on the weapon, or the weapon just counts as one, so you only have to wear two of his armor, is another story, and that would kind of make sense, but still it's very freeing and very powerful. Just maybe not as literally broken, which honestly is a good thing, because they were too good otherwise. But today then, let's break down and explain well, as I said, his skin that you're going to be wearing. And not just any skin. Game-breaking, game-changing skin. So then, let's talk the armor, because there is a lot of armor to talk about. Well, that's not true. It's the usual amount, you know, your head, your chest, your arms, your legs, your waist. But within those body parts, let's just move on, there is a lot of power to be held. But before we talk about the ability, which is going to change everything, the Dragon Vein Awakening. Oh, what? This again? Let's give a nod to just the visual incredibleness, because it is a very well-designed armor set aesthetically. It is very clean, it is very stylish, it has the detail going on, and it really does represent a suit from such a majestic red dragon. And of course, the fact when you draw your weapon, you get cloaks descend, visors come down, runes light up, and you just generally look like a glowing god. And that that is something I want to see happen a lot more with future armor sets. I don't just mean every time you unsheath anything, it's just... But, you know, generally speaking, some sort of visual change based on you doing some sort of something is a nice way to add extra flavor. So, here's hoping that happens. Firstly then, again, before Dragon Vein Awakening! Okay, seriously, can a Safi sleep? Let's look at, well, the slottage and the stats. So, the set all together gives you your full crit boost, bit of evade window, and a bit of light resistance on your beta, which, let's be honest, is what you're going to be using. And that's fine, right? Crit boost, obviously very valuable, but 
we want to know how customizable it is because we're going to be using three and honestly a lot of builds and weapons probably five slots but again we'll get to that later the helmet a bit of a made window a bit of crit boost but a four slot and two ones absolutely fantastic a lot of room for a lot of stuff that theme continues with the chest which uh, sees us with a four and a two again another crit boost bit of blight resistance it's just nice it's fantastic template armor which is what it needs to be because of well the ability the arms look at that a four and two twos bit of blight resistance yeah sure but it just doesn't matter what matters on this armor is the slottage and the four and the one in the chest very very good and then finally a four two and one with a crit boost on the legs is even if the set bonus wasn't a thing these legs would get used they are very very tasty now if there wasn't anything special going on the helm would probably get used the chest maybe and the legs probably but they would have to compete with Yankaruga. essentially what i'm saying is the stats and the slots are fine right fine to good a few pieces might crop up here and there but largely we'd be talking about oh, it's a bit disappointing for something like safi but it all comes together when we look at his ability dragon vein awakening i bet you thought there was going to be another little safi waking up thing going on here but no no, there isn't. So, Dragon Vein Awakening then, how does it work? Well, when you unsheath your weapon with this armor on, firstly, you get a nice bump in both affinity and element slash status. With the three set, you gain 20% affinity. With the five set, you gain 40% affinity. Equipping this armor, all five pieces, is just bonus critical eye seven so you think about that that's a pretty good start then you also get with the five set 120 extra status and 150 extra element not incredible but it's nothing to sniff at it's nice for just putting it on and very much goes in the way of making up for let's say light raw skills found on the equipment now this certainly can't compete for you elemental types with true crit element from your silver wrath loss Except then when you realize with the Safi weapons you can have true crit element on the weapon and then still use this 5 set and yeah this is very exciting for everyone. Then the actual how it interacts with you beating on a monster and this is the same for both 3 and 5 set. Every single weapon in the game, when you now hit in this armor, you will damage yourself. The weapon decides how much damage you take. Two health and attack for dual blades, eight health and attack for great swords. So heavier, slower, more damage. You get it. So every time you hit, you take damage. When you have taken 40 damage, so five hits for a great sword at eight apiece, 20 hits for dual blades at two apiece, you then will rapidly heal for 65 health. So it is overall a gain, and as long as you're not getting constantly hit, you're going to find yourself very healthy indeed. Now, if you sheath your weapon before triggering the required amount of damage taken to do the heal, well, it resets the counter, so you're just going to be hurting yourself. So, for us great sorters who, well, let's be honest, we sheath a lot, this might not actually be that ideal, but still plenty usable, even though more than likely we'll end up using a Safi Greatsword with some other valuable armor set bonus on it while still retaining three-piece Teostra because they are quite efficient armor pieces. So yeah, this certainly won't get used for everyone, but the potential is unbelievable. Now, a few specifics on how it actually interacts with stuff then. These are your general rules. Now, while you're unsheathed, you don't naturally heal red health unless you have the Val 2 set. So that's a nice little niche interaction with him. Outside of that, all skills that affect red health work. Of course they do. So resentment might be very valuable here. 25 raw while you're attacking because you'll always be putting yourself in red health. Yeah, not bad. Except that if you have a health augment and you hit hard enough, you'll be instantly healing the self damage that you do, which kind of cancels that out. But it does mean health augments completely eliminate the negative of this armor set and then you just get an extra 65 blast of healing every now and then which needless to say is very very good all skills that affect healing work here too so if you have plus 30 percent healing that 65 health well gets boosted by a lot well 30 percent as you might expect ah 
And that is very, very potent indeed. So we are going to be very, very healthy hunters going forward using this armor set. Other than that, there's not really too much to say. It kind of, well, makes sense. There's a set of rules that we can abide by while using it. Obviously, you can get super reckless, don't use a health augment, go max resentment, end up in heroics, but it can kill you, so you don't want to let yourself get too low while actually wearing it. But all in all, the potential here is absolutely just through the roof, and I cannot wait to explore it, coupled with the weapons and everything going on there. And essentially, we're going to have just an entire slot of new builds, both meta and just fun, to be playing around with. Honestly, this armor set, how it works, coupled with the weapon and the monster, it's just a masterpiece of an update from the aesthetics to how it will affect mechanical gameplay. It is an absolute triumph, and I could not be happier, could not be more pleased, could not be more excited to get on with it, actually farm everything up, and see what can it be come up with. So all in all, Dragon Fade Awakening! I'm gonna kill you! Is just phenomenal, and I think you, like me, are about to go farm all of the Safi, so let's just go do that, everyone! What do you think? How are you liking it? I'm sure there'll be a lot more research done into it, and expect a lot of just videos, everything, very, very soon, but yeah. Oh, give me your skin! Uh, uh, Safi's skin. <laughs> Obviously not yours. That's later. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more. I'll see you soon. A good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo. But I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song. And don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on... It... I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.